I think I fell asleep at 8 o'clock last night. No, I fell asleep at 7.30 last night. And I woke up at 3.45. That's a good sleep for me. Because uh, usually it's like, if I go to sleep that early, I'll wake up at like 2.30 or something. I can't sleep much longer. But no, today, uh, yeah, I woke up super early. How's it going, guys? Basically the same thing today. Heading up to the mountain and uh, gonna try to get there early. They got a whole bunch of snow. Not as much as yesterday, but a whole bunch. So I'm excited for that. like anyone's walked up yet so that's kind of nice <laughs> I think I'll still be in a rush though so oh, much slush I'm gonna get changed and get up there. So I'll see you guys up top.
that was uh, just an awesome day. The lift lines kind of get annoying and I don't know, I don't think there's any other way around that. I think you have to wait and then try to find powder. This place is very busy, like really busy. Um, that being said, I had an awesome day and it was a freaking blast. Tomorrow's going to be my last day and I'm going to go spend it on Whistler because I haven't been over there yet. And I think they'll be opening up more train tomorrow. Um, if I could have done anything different, I think I would have just tried to, I was trying to figure out, uh, like I got to, I got to the bottom of uh, Crystal and I just seen the lift line there and it was just even longer than the last time. And I was like, I'm not waiting again. So I just rode it somewhere else, went for, went to road more. Like I got, I think I got more runs in and then waiting in lift lines. So that's good. But like, if I would have just kept lapping that same one, um, I would have gotten uh, probably one another because my last one I did, it went through these trees over there and they were so good. But uh, that being said, I could have went back up there and they'd be tracked out by then. It's, it's crazy how fast stuff gets tracked out here. It's nuts. Just a really good day. I got a lot of editing to do if I'm gonna get a video out tomorrow. So I'm gonna run and get propane now and then uh, head over into the uh, spot that I was parking before and just park there, hunker down, and probably start the generator because I think, yep, I need some power. And just uh, hang out like that. By the way, when I say I need power, I just don't like getting it, letting it get below 50% just in case something happens where I can't get power, I can't plug in my generator for a couple days. I like to just keep it up. You can drop these batteries down to like just about zero uh, without hurting them. You can actually drop them down to zero. A lot of people say don't do that though. They say drop them down to like 10% and then should be better. But I usually just like get down to about 50, about 70% and then I'm like, okay, I'll just plug in the generator. It also takes a really long time to charge up this battery system with the charging system I have. And by all means, if it was summertime, it'd be really easy to charge it up because solar would be going nuts and just pump these batteries full of power, like nonstop. But in the meantime, like plugging it into my little generator there, that only charges it at like maybe 10 amps. And if you're charging it at 10 amps and you have 50% it's going to take like 12 hours just to charge the system so it's better to just try to keep it topped up than to let it get really low and then have to like keep trying to charge it over the next like five days yeah <laughs> that's my little rant your solution to that would be a really high output DC to DC charger so like a 60 amp DC to DC charger you'll have these charged up in like three hours from zero, just about. Just about charged up in three hours from zero. But um, if you, the other way too is you can get a inverter charger that'll charge these at like 50 amps or something. Sometimes I think even more you can get them to do it and it'll like, yeah, it'll pump like a lot of power into them and they can take it. Um, the BMS on these are 100 amps and I believe how that works is you can charge them up to about 100 amps. And I don't know how you would do that. You'd need to quite the, yeah. But uh, if you have enough solar, you could do that. But yeah. Also the battery system in this is only 200 amp hours. So by all means, it does work. You just have to charge it often. And uh, living out here where you don't get that much sun, you need a generator. That's just how it is. And uh, usually when I'm working and I'm uh, back in, when I'm back in town uh, where I'm from and I'm working, I just plug it in at work there and uh, that usually just charges up my system and tops it up. Um, I'll often let it uh, go a couple days before I plug it in again, just so I can let it die down a little bit and then charge it back up because I don't like just keeping it topped up all the time. I, I don't, 
I thought I read somewhere that that's not great for him, so I just don't do that. I let him just charge a little bit. <laughs> okay, let's get going. And it's snowing again. My windshield's a little foggy. Oops. You know, I think propane gets a bad rap for no reason. The only time that you wouldn't want like a propane system in your camper is if you're going to do like international traveling into like, uh, let's say South America or something like that. I have heard uh, a lot of times that propane is very hard to come by and that's where a diesel heater will be on top of everything, diesel or gas heater. A lot of times people are worried about getting their propane filled in just like normal places in North America and I'll tell you right now just about any town you go into in North America there's going to be a way to get your propane filled. Would I say that the diesel heater would be cheaper? Yes. Would I say in the long run it would be cheaper? Depends. If you're getting a Chinese diesel heater, you're gonna just keep buying those because watch any of your favorite YouTubers on on here and they all seem to have issues with their Chinese diesel heaters at some point. And it's like a con I don't know, it's if it's a Chinese diesel heater, yeah, they're gonna have issues with it constantly. Like, at the end of the day, just go buy a fast, just a brand name one, and you'll have a lot better luck. But I think ultimately, my propane heater being over 20 years old and original to this camper, and still running, and I can still get parts for it, just saying, I could actually buy a replacement for it if I had to, and it's only $400. So tell me again why I should put a diesel heater in here when my propane system does a better job at heating this thing. Did I just say that? And the only reason I say that it does a better job at heating it is because I can put three ducts onto it and they all push the same amount of air out. Try running 14 feet of ducting with your diesel heater and then wire it off. Yeah, wire it off and run, let's say, eight feet of ducting on each one. And tell me how much air you have blowing out of there. Not a lot. How do I know? Because I tried. I tried it with this camper. And what did I end up doing? I ended up putting the propane heater back in because it was an epic fail on my behalf. If you're someone with like a van build or like a much smaller truck camper and you don't need to heat your water tanks or anything, then yeah, a diesel heater would be great. But uh, I, I'm here to tell you that that propane furnace you have in there, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing at all. a third powder day <laughs> uh, I've lucked out so much on this trip uh, what a beauty if that looks familiar to you it's my leftover tacos and that's what I'm having for dinner tonight nothing special
Well guys, it is looking like the trip is coming to an end. Um, tomorrow is my last day of snowboarding and I'm not sure if I'm going to stay in, well, another night here at this spot tomorrow night or if I'm going to try to make it to Squamish and stay down there somewhere. Um, be cool if I could get to Hope or something, but uh, I'm also not in that much of a hurry to get back. I still got like two more days, uh, Saturday and Sunday. I could just hammer down and make my way back on Sunday, but I don't really want to do that. I've done that before. I'd rather split the trip and uh, put it into like two parts rather than do it all in one big shot. Like I said before, I don't like doing as long of drives anymore. It's not, it's not appealing to me anymore. That being said, uh, tonight's been really good. Um, pretty cozy in here. I got the generator going. Uh, slowly but surely charging the batteries. About my DC to DC charger, uh, basically, I think what I'm gonna have to do is, uh, I've been wanting to upgrade it anyways to a 40 amp, just cause uh, the 20 doesn't seem to be enough. But I've seen Victron sells a 30 amp one, and I might just switch it to Victron, because I've heard their products are better than Renergy. So, I don't know. The Renogy works good too, and all my other stuff is Renogy, so maybe I will just keep it with Renogy. And the Renogy's cheaper. If I go to that 40 amp though, I might have to start carrying a second alternator with me just in case, because like, that's gonna be a lot of strain on that alternator. I think I'm going to wrap it up for tonight though. Uh, I just, mostly all I've done is just edit, and the video's ready, and I just gotta do some more things to send it up. By the way, if you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe, because I got a lot more coming. I'll catch you guys in the next one.